Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jessica Ogden. I'm a partner at LP Archaeology and I'm here today with my colleague Flo um, to introduce the SODA toolkit, that is the Social Distancing for Archaeology toolkit uh, project and many thanks to, to FAME for inviting us uh, to come and speak today. We're really looking forward to um, introducing our project. So just to give a little agenda uh, for what we're going to speak about today, in the first instance, we'll give a little background um, to the project and as well as the aims and the objectives, um, and then uh, give a sneak peek into the resources that we've produced um, as part of the project, as well as talk a little bit about our dissemination strategy and what we hope to be the, the impact um, going forward. So if we could all just uh, momentarily cast our minds back to, to March of earlier this year um, and think through to the, the origins of this project, which was in the emergence of the pandemic, um, we as an organization at LP were thinking through, uh, like many other organizations in the archeological um, sector, we're thinking through what the impact of COVID-19 uh, might be on our business and our ability to continue uh, working in the field. Um, and this is reflected by the uh, statistic here from Historic England's uh, sector survey um, that was conducted earlier this year at the start of the pandemic, uh, which identifies that 97% of incorporated private sector archaeology companies or sole traders cited the loss or postponement of work as a major effect of, of COVID-19. Um, and so it was in this context um, that, that LP uh, started thinking through um, how we might be able to, to contribute uh, to the sector by trying to document how to demonstrate the, the industry guidance that was with, emerging around social distancing at the time. And in came off the back of this sector survey, uh, Historic England's COVID-19 Emergency Response Fund uh, which we decided as an organization to apply to, um, to think through how we might contribute to a, um, a digital engagement strategy for demonstrating social distancing in archaeology. Um, and with that, we were successful uh, with the grant, uh, which uh, helped us uh, through the foundations of this project. And so I wanted to say a little bit about what the specific aims and the objectives were um, at the start of the project. And in the first instance, as I've already alluded to, uh, this was really about uh, demonstrating safe working practices in archaeological sites. Um, and we've extended that slightly to think through how that might also apply in the post excavation or office context in archaeological work. Um, and really, our, our overall goal here was to contribute and help facilitate the safe return to, to field and office-based archaeological work um, at the start of the pandemic. Um, and this enabled us to outline a few objectives, and here's just a, few, a couple of them. Um, in the first instance, we wanted to produce a series of uh, documentary style films, um, and as well as additional resources to complement the films to demonstrate uh, this guidance, as well as create, um, sorry, coordinate the creation and dissemination of these outputs with, with key beneficiaries and, and stakeholder groups, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. So just to give a few notes on, on the process of, of the project um, to frame the contribution of what we think the SODA toolkit will be, um, we really see SODA as complementary to, to industry guidance, um, and that is to demonstrate the guidance in practice rather than produce guidance, because obviously LP are not a, a guidance organization. And with that, we, we chose um, quite specifically to do some early engagement with industry stakeholders um, as well as continuing that engagement throughout the production of these resources. And that first involved um, getting in touch with Prospect uh, Archaeologist Branch, as well as uh, CIFA and, and FAME. Um, but then throughout the project, we work really closely with, with Prospect um, to take their advice uh, to assure, ensure that the, um, the practices that we were demonstrating as part of the toolkit were in line with uh, the evolving guidance. So many, many thanks to, to Prospect for supporting us in that project uh, process, rather. Um, and just a note here that we really are aiming to continue these collaborations uh, throughout the dissemination pro process, which we'll say a little bit more about in a moment. 
Um, so without further ado, uh, just to outline the resources that we've produced as part of the toolkit, um, we've done some films. Uh, so we've done four films, which we'll say more about in a moment, as well as a series of signs and downloadable stickers, uh, which will be available on the website, as well as a, a toolbox talk and a risk assessment uh, workflow document. So for the films, uh, we've done we, they were essentially been designed to be short, uh, short films, so three to five minutes long, um, and designed to really stand alone so that you don't have to watch all of them. Um, you could, you can pick and choose what you might want to use in your own organization or, or community group. Um, they cover a range of scenarios across, uh, archaeological work, both on site as well as within the office. And it's really the focus of the project, so therefore the focus of the films is really on COVID specific uh, risks. And with that, we've outlined sort of four, four films, uh, the first being a kind of basic overview um, around getting set up on site as, as well as getting to work uh, safely. We've got a film on distancing at work, which outlines social distancing um, within the workplace. And the third film is around uh, welfare breaks and cleaning, which really highlights the kind of um, hygiene protocols that need to be in place um, on site as well as in uh, the office. And then we've got a final film here, which is entitled Back to the Office, which outlines some of the ways in which we need to think through social distancing um, and hygiene protocols within uh, the post-excavation and office uh, scenarios. So we've included a couple of uh, clips from our films, which I'll just talk over while we describe here. So the first is um, thinking through how you might arrive to site um, and all of the sort of signage and protocols that you need in place for enabling staff to keep at a safe distance and you know, where to put their uh, belongings in a safe way that, that keeps them um, out of, of the spaces of other staff. And then we've got a clip here around our sort of morning, morning briefing. So how you do um, kind of conventional tasks within um, the day, but also using those morning briefings to reiterate safe working practices um, that incorporate uh, social distancing and hygiene protocols that almost certainly need to be reiterated on a, a regular basis. Um, let's see, the next film, um, we've got a clip from our Back to the Office film, which is really around um, protocols for bringing uh, fines and, and other artifacts back to, back to your post excavation facilities and the kind of cleaning regimes that you need to have in place, as well as some of the signage that we provided, um, for enabling, uh, distancing within your working environment. And we've also considered some aspects of, of mental health, um, and ergonomics that, that offices need to, to think through with their staff. Um, and this sort of displays some of the, the signage resources that we have made available as part of the project as well. Um, and here are the signs. Uh, there are many of them. Um, we've made them available in various sizes, um, and some of them are intended to be uh, stickers as well. So we've got lots of one-way um, and distance signs that can be used to, to stick to the floors of your post-excavation facilities, for example. Um, we've also, as I alluded to earlier, have put additional emphasis on um, mental health uh, as well, which was some of the feedback that we received from some stakeholders. Uh, to think through how we can highlight and raise awareness around mental health and well-being, as well as collaboration um, with our staff and, and community workers. Um, and alongside this, um, we've also we've included some signs that give a little light-hearted relief, and this is one of the signs on the far right, uh, which is in small text. Uh, so if you, if you can't read this, then you're standing too close as another mechanism for kind of keeping people reminded of the distancing that's required um, during the pandemic. Um, and just another note that the part of the visual identity which we've designed as part of the project uh, uses this kind of color coding scheme. So where red indicates awareness, um, blue is around sort of hygiene protocols, and yellow indicates uh, distancing. Um, and some additional resources that we've produced uh, using some of the prospect guidance. Um, in the one hand, it's uh, on the left, we've got a toolbox talk, um, which we think can be reused in most contexts to um, 
convey the the overall guidance for um, social distancing and hygiene as well as we've provided some spaces to enable you to to insert your own notes on either evolving government guidance as well as um, some site specific things that you need to highlight within your own archaeological context on the right we've included what we've called a risk assessment workflow uh, which is really just a, a highlight overview of the main um, ha example hazards that are presented through COVID-19 alongside some example control measures um, that, that might be need, need to be considered uh, when outlining risk assessment documents in your own site-specific context. So uh, we're planning a week of dissemination uh, for our resources over our uh, project website, as well as social media and various stakeholder channels, which we're relying on. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're hoping that that will go out this, this week um, as well. So, uh, and this is just an open invitation to please get in touch with us uh, if you end up actually using any of these resources or indeed with ideas or ways that we might be able to broaden the reach of our um, resources. And just wanted to note that we are, we are currently in talks with other groups um, about repurposing the resources in the kind of community as well as academic fieldwork context. So we've been talking to uh, CBA as well as the uh, University Archaeology UK group. Um, and here we really just want to note that we of course recognize that um, the sector has been working hard since March to get folks back on site um, and into the office and, and up and running since, since the original grant and the start of, of our project back in March. Um, but we really see this toolkit being increasingly, unfortunately, increasingly useful uh, for a broad range of stakeholders um, in order to continue to demonstrate uh, safe working practices. But also, um, we feel it can be used to really reiterate these safe working practices um, as we, uh, as the pandemic has evolved and we are now in an impending uh, second wave. Um, so. Yeah, so we, we unfortunately hope that see these resources being relevant for, for some time to come. Um, and with that, I just wanted to give some acknowledgements uh, to date. So, of course, uh, so we at LP have produced this toolkit, but this was uh, funded by uh, Historic England and uh, would, would not have been possible without the support of a Prospect Union um, archaeologist branch as well. So many thanks to them for enabling our project. Um, and here's just some, uh, some links to, to contact us if you have any further questions that we don't answer in the, in the webinar. Uh, please feel free to drop us an email. We've got a custom email address at soda at lprarchaeology.com. And without further ado, the resources and further information about the project will also be found on our website, which is uh, soda-toolkit.info. Um, and yeah, please let us know if you have any questions or comments. Um, and many thanks again uh, to Fame for inviting us to speak with you today. Mm -hmm.